Hello and welcome to Cosmetics Business Standside here live in Paris for the 2024 edition of In Cosmetics Global. Today I'm super excited to be joined by Anastasia who is the founder of Hort AI. Anastasia, thank you so much for joining us and we're looking to take a deep dive into the company. Thank you so much Tristan and Cosmetics Business and welcome everyone. Fantastic. So give us a bit of an overview of your company. Um, who is Hort AI? What is it, it you guys do? What, what is your product? So Howdy AI is a software as a service platform for beauty businesses and we cover different aspects of beauty business uh, like hair analysis, skin analysis and recommendation engines. And recently we announced a new product which is called Skin GPT. So last year we entered Generative AI as well. Fantastic. And so that's a great overview of the company. And now we're also interested to find out about yourself as well. So what inspired you to then spot the gap in the market for Hort AI? And how's the journey been so far? The journey has been amazing, uh, bumpy at times, but you know, I enjoy it all the way. Uh, we founded the company with my co-founder uh, and uh, originally we were working not in uh, software for retail, but rather software for clinical studies, where scientists uh, by our background, so my background is in biophysics and bioengineering. Right. So I will get there how it matches their uh, e-commerce <laughs> in a second. So we have been working for ab ab about three years in skincare testing facilities and we analyzed a lot of product effects before and after during clinical trials. What, ab what was absolutely striking for us is that when you look at the data on the clinical trials of skincare, skincare is improving skin significantly. Right, yeah. So the, the question is, why is it genuinely considered by people outside of beauty industry, but skincare is not working, right? So it's driven by marketing. We think it's absolutely unfair because skincare is working and realized that it's uh, happening because of the wrong consumer choices. Right. So consumers don't really understand their skin and then they come in on the websites to shop for skincare or they come into physical stores and they get lost. They get something that's not working for their skin and it's like, it's, it's not, it's a bad situation for everyone. Consumers are not right or finding the right products. Brands are not being, being able to reach the right audience or market their products properly. So then we felt like, you know, there is new technology arising, there is AI. So why don't we take AI and put it on this task of finding the perfect beauty products for consumers that will benefit both consumers and brands. So this is how we started out. That makes so much sense because I think, you know, there's so many products and options out there, but as you say, the consumers may not even know their skin type or what is the right product for their skin type. And they could actually make detrimental decisions as well and potentially even aggravate the skin. So I think this is a fantastic solution, which, you know, will probably help that purchasing decision make a little go a little bit smoother. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we're really happy that uh, we now help about 200,000 consumers per month find the right products and they're using it using AI and they can do it from physical stores but they can also do it from the comfort of their own home which I yeah. find absolutely amazing. That is fantastic and looking at your customers then in that case how are they utilizing this technology currently then? So we have a couple of different customer uh, segments we have retailers we have brands, manufacturers, we have some of the clinics and pharmacies. So use cases can be slightly different. So for e-commerce, we're helping optimize where traffic is navigating. Yeah. So that you know consumers can find the very products faster without any friction and hassle and just you know enjoy the whole online experience. For physical stores, we're helping consultants uh, better interact with consumers at this added service you know where you not only shop the products but you're actually getting an actionable advice about your skin yeah. overall so it's like a gap between consumer education can be also filled with our software in the pharmacies we're helping uh, select the over-the-counter products for pharmacists and also for consumers to just see what other options they have right okay. and finally for clinics we help analyze before and after effects which i think is one of the strongest things in skincare you know before and afters Absolutely. So that's fantastic. So you're, you're able to cater for businesses of most sizes, if not any size. Uh, and are you able to operate globally as well? Uh, yeah, so we operate globally. We now have our software served to 32 different markets and we serve both to corporates and uh, small medium enterprises. We have different packages and uh, we just believe that uh, uh, one of the, um, you know, at some time point, any technology like AI and AI for beauty is not an exception, should be dem like democratized, digitalized, yes. dematerialized. 
and we think uh, it just makes it more available for everyone because we want not only you know the corporates to benefit from our solutions but also the small medium businesses because there are a lot of brands that are just growing and they also want to use AI to boost their sales to sure. boost their customer experience and we think it, it's very fair to make it available for everyone. I, I totally agree, and I think you know, particularly with the SME market that you identified there, a lot of the innovation in technologies are from within the SME market, not just for big corporations as well. So having a software available across all of those markets seems to make so much sense. Yes, thank you. So last year you introduced Skin GPT. Yes, that's uh, correct. And how did that go for you? Um, honestly, Skin GPT has been one of our most popular products last okay. year and it continues this year. I think uh, the value for us just quickly about Skin GPT. So, Skin GPT technology utilizes generative AI yep. and Transformers technology developed by you know, a group of scientists in the last five years uh, that can transform skin. So, this technology allows to simulate skin conditions using clinical data. So it's very photorealistic, images are super high resolution. So consumers can understand not how products will be benefiting them based on you know, population, but basically every consumer can see how their own skin will transform when they're using different products. Right, okay. But this application actually is way broader than just simulation of product effects and aging effects. Uh, in addition to raising consumer awareness of how products work and environmental effects, that Skin GPT can showcase, we also feel a very important gap in the data. Right. Because if you want to make state-of-the-art accurate AI, you need to ensure that you have relevant data sets yes. so that algorithms perform equally well on different population cohorts and that it's functionally relevant for different markets. And Skin GPT can actually simulate any type of data with any skin condition and this helps us internally make a high-quality technology, but it also helps brands being again more relevant to their audience, especially yes. if they're operating globally. That makes sense. And, and you mentioned earlier on about uh, generative AI. Maybe you can give us a bit of an insight in, into exactly what that is uh, and how it's relevant for the beauty and cosmetics markets. Generative AI has been trending in the last couple of years. I, uh, I think an important concept is uh, generative AI is way more approachable and than, for example, NFTs or metaverse, which were yeah. popular trends, but generative AI seems to like stay with us. Uh, and uh, if you look at the industry overall, like outside of beauty, a lot of use cases are focused on content generation. Like you can generate marketing materials, you can generate videos, you can generate texts. In the beauty, uh, a lot of applications are also centered around content generation. Right, yeah. However, uh, companies like Hout are building specialized AI, generative AI for beauty, like SkinGPT, and we also will announce uh, another conversational AI uh, this later this year. Um, and uh, where I think generative AI can make an impact beyond content generation is hyper-personalization at scale. Mm -hmm. yeah. So beauty companies will be able to deliver hyper-personalized content whether it is marketing materials or messaging or conversation, you know, consumers may prefer different, uh, you know, style of conversations. Someone maybe wants education, someone maybe wants, you know, very streamlined answers. Yeah. And technologies like SkinGPT, again, they help uh, understand every consumer what products will benefit them the most and how exactly it will look like. Because imagine someone telling you, Tristan, you know, if you buy this cream in this amazing, beautiful bottle, you will have reduction of your wrinkles by 20%. Yes. But does it actually give you a picture what your face will look like yeah, sure. with 20% less wrinkles? And SkinGPT can exactly tell you, Tristan, if you buy this cream, this is how you will look like. This is how your face Fantastic. can expect it. Isn't yeah. it amazing? And that, that is the future. Uh, and, and I think that is incredible. And I think, you know, particularly as we look into the future, AI has been uh, an emerging trend uh, within the beauty and cosmetics industry for a few years now. But it seems to me like you're really taking it that next step forward and looking forward and particularly into the future as well. You know, where do you see the future of e-commerce e heading uh, specifically? I think e-commerce uh, will have some of the challenges because, uh, you know, COVID is over for a couple of years now. A lot of customers are going back to the physical retail, right? And, and I think that a lot of e-commerces will want to have this dynamic of the customers, yeah. you know, positive. Uh, so in that sense, I think um, e-commerce 
unfortunately cannot always deliver experiences like you have in physical stores. Like sure. you can't uh, you can't touch the products, you can't smell, smell them, yeah. you can't wait, you know, a nice packaging, you know, but yeah. also phones with experience. So I think retailers and e-commerces will have to innovate, right? To kind of to some extent kind of balance with experience you have offline and Absolutely. online. So uh, in my view there will be a lot of interconnection between online and offline powered by technology. Uh, powered by AI, you know. Uh, so, so basically, I think that retailers will uh, navigate towards even better customer experience to be able to retain their customers. And I think a lot of that will be powered by artificial intelligence. I agree. I think, and I think that's a very sensible approach to that as well. It's fantastic. So, for anybody who's interested in utilizing the services, where can I find you? So you can uh, please go to our website, hout.ai, and uh, give us a request for a demo, or just you can always direct message me on LinkedIn. I will be really happy to have a conversation about beauty, and let's make beauty AI-driven and innovative altogether. Totally agree. Thank you so much, Anastasia. That was really, really, really insightful. And we'll definitely be following your company, because I'm sure you've got plenty more exciting things in the pipeline as well. Thank you so much, Tristan, for the conversation, and thank you to Cosmetics Beauty and all of the subscribers. And that was Stan Slide with, with Cosmetics Business. Thank you so much for watching and tuning in. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And more importantly, follow Hort AI uh, in, in future years to come.